So in this lesson, we're going to deal with absolute value inside of an equation. So when we were studying families of functions, I said the absolute value wasn't really its own family. It was kind of a cousin of the linear, or at least the ones we looked at were cousins of linears. So since we're in the linear unit, I thought we would just go ahead and install some equations where the unknown is inside the absolute value. Okay, so in order to do this, you have to realize um, what it, absolute value means. Okay, so the absolute value means a number's distance away from zero. So if I look at the most fundamental basic equation involving the absolute value, what this equation is asking me, it's saying, hey, what number is two units away from zero? And so if I think about this graphically, I have two numbers um, that are two units away from zero, and they are negative two and two. So that means x equals two, or it equals negative two. So that means my solution set actually contains two numbers. It contains two and it contains negative two because they both work, all right? So one way to solve these is to think about what this is telling you. This is telling me that the expression inside the absolute value is either a two or a negative two because when I took the sign away, the value was two, okay? So I need to be a little bit careful because if I tell you the absolute value of x equals zero, well, or the absolute value of any expression equals zero, um, there's only gonna be one answer, right? And this one is x equals zero. Now here's where we have to be super careful. And this is where I get kids on tests and quizzes, is when I give them something like this, an equation that tells you the absolute value of some number is actually negative, which we know can't be true because absolute value represents a distance and distances can't be negative. So this is an example where there's no solution. Now, why we have zero, one, or two answers, one answer, uh, no answer, or two answer, goes back to the graph. Um, this equation relates back to some function that hits the x-axis twice. So it's some v that does this. And this equation um, correlates to some equation or some graph, some function that only hits the graph once, meaning its vertex is there. And this actually re represents some function that doesn't even hit the x-axis at all. So it's like that, or it's the upside down version of that. And that's why we get two one or zero answers. And if you think about linear equations, we pretty much only had like one answer, and that's because the x, the, a line can only hit the graph, the x-axis once. All right, so knowing this, the definition and the reason why I can get two answers uh, is all good and, and nice. Um, but what I really need to be able to do is I need to be able to, to do this symbolically and not think about it graphically or think about the definition or draw a number line or anything like that. I wanna be able to just take the equation and solve it like I solve any other equation. And so to do that, I'm just gonna think about the definition and think about what I have to do to solve an equation. And if I remember from the very beginning of equation solving, I said you had to undo what was done to the unknown. Well, one of the things that's been done to the unknown is the absolute value. And so I have to undo the absolute value. So if I think of the absolute value as little shower stalls that wash the sign away, to undo absolute value, I have to put the sign back on. And I don't know if it was positive or negative to begin with, so I have to give both options that'll work. So what this equation is telling me, it's telling me that either 2x is equal to four or 2x is equal to negative four because this quantity when had the absolute value taken of it, it gave me a four. So that meant that either 2x is a positive four or 2x is a negative four. So to get rid of the absolute value, what you really have to do is split it into two equations, the positive version and the negative version. So to undo the absolute value, you must split into two equations. And then you have to solve both equations. So when I ask you to solve something with absolute value, I'm actually doubling the work uh, that you have to do because I've got to apply these properties twice. And so I get x equals two, or I get x equals negative two. And this is why solution set notation works, because either I write the sentence, um, the solution is two or negative two, or I just write it in solution set notation and include both answers, okay? 
And so, yeah, that's what I have to do for absolute value. I have to split it into two equations. Um, and so we're going to do a couple of examples just to make sure um, that you understand this concept. Uh, so I have the absolute value of negative 3x plus 9 equaling 12. Okay, so to solve this, uh, I think about the equation first and make sure it is solvable. Um, I First off, I can get an absolute value that's 12. And if I think about the definition of absolute value and what it did to this expression, it took the sign off. So my job is to put the sign back on. So either that's a positive 12 or this expression is a negative 12. And so now what I have are two two-step equations to solve. As I said, absolute value doubles my work. Um, and so then I have to subtract off 9 from both sides of both equations using SPO. And I'm going to do this simultaneously because I can. And those are gone, and those are gone. And I'm left with negative 3x equaling 3 here, and negative 3x equaling uh, negative 21 here. And it's not the same. I'm not going to get the answer like I got last time with the plus or minus 2 because I did more in here. I added or subtracted. And what that does is it shifts the graph left or right. Remember from families of functions, it shifts it left or right when I have a subtraction or addition inside the absolute value. And that's exactly what happened. Instead of having a positive answer and a negative answer on either side of the 0, I moved the graph around. So now um, my x-intercepts or my answers are actually um, separated out apart away from the 0. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. Gone, gone. I get x equals negative 1 and x equals 7. So now, um, before I move on, I have to check to make sure this works. And I'm going to check it with the original. Um, and I don't have to actually type in absolute value if I don't want to, uh, but I am in this case. So I'm going to do negative 3 times negative 1 plus 9. And I better get 12, and I do. And so I'm going to take advantage of my calculator's special features and recall that answer to just type in and replace that with a 7. And I press answer, and I get a 12. So I know I did this correctly. And so now my solution is negative 1 and 7. Now, I'm going to say this again. One of the most missed things in absolute value is people will do the work to find one answer and assume it's going to be the positive and negative version of it. That's only true if you don't have a plus or minus inside the absolute value. The second you put the plus or minus in there, it shifts where the 0 is. And so now you're, not going, to, you're going to get two answers that are not opposites of each other. You're going to get two entirely different numbers. Okay, so and the best way to do it is to check it. If I had thought the answer was 1 and negative 1, I plug in 1 to that thing, I'm not going to get it to work. So always check. Always, 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 always check. Okay, now the only time you don't have to split this into two equations is when this absolute value equals 0. Because the positive and negative version of 0 is just 0. So if I get uh, 12 minus 2x, the absolute value of 12 minus 2x equaling 0, I don't have to split this thing because there's no positive and negative version of 0. Um, so I get to get 12 minus 2x equals 0. And then I'm going to add 2x to both sides, because I can. Those are gone. I get 12 equals 2x. Divide both sides by 2. I get 6 equals x. And I double check it. 12 minus 2 times 6 is 12 minus 12. So indeed, my solution is just 6. Now remember, when you're solving an absolute value equation, you only get one answer. That thing there has to be 0. All right. Now, let's fancy this up. Um, because I consider these like maybe at this point in the year like a one hamster kind of problem. Um, so let's fancy it up and make it a two hamster level problem. And so to make it a two hamster level problem, what I'm going to do is I'm going to do stuff outside of the absolute value. like so. So I multiplied it and I added it and so I want to deal with this now. Now here's the deal. Um, you cannot or you should not split this into two equations until you get the absolute value by itself. So what you need to do when I put other stuff outside is to isolate the absolute value. Okay? And you're going to use your pose. You're going to treat this like 3x plus 6 equals 48. It's just the x is going to be the absolute value of, of negative 4x plus 4. And if you want to, you can actually do something called u-substitution, where you make this actually look like 3x plus 6. 
um, but I'm not going to do that. Um, I'm just going to use my uh, my pose. So I'm going to subtract off a six from both sides strategically just to get rid of that six. So then I have three times the absolute value of negative four x plus four equals 42. And so now I see a three times an absolute value and I don't want the three times, I want the absolute value by itself. So I'm going to divide off that three. And 42 does go into three and it goes into it 14 times. So then what I have is the absolute value of negative 4x plus 4 equaling 14. Now at this point right here, this is when I'm going to split it because I've isolated the absolute value by itself. And so now I'm going to turn it into my two equations. Negative 4x plus 4 equals 14 and negative 4x plus 4 equals negative 14 because I have to remember what this means. This means that this expression here is either a positive 14 or a negative 14, but because the absolute value were taken um, of that expression, I don't know which one, so I have to solve for both because they're both going to work. And so then I go ahead and solve this one. I get negative 4x equals 10. x equals negative 10 over 4, which is negative 5 halves. Okay, and I solve this one. I get negative 4x equals negative 14 and therefore x equals a positive uh, 14 over 4, which is 7 halves. And I want to make sure this works. So I go back and I type this in 3 uh, times the absolute value of, uh, sorry, negative 4 times negative 5 halves plus 4. And outside of that, I'm going to add the 6. And I better get a 48. And I do. So this one works. So yay. And then I'm going to take advantage of the features of my calculator and just replace the 5 halves with 7 halves instead because that's my other answer. And I better get a 48. And I don't. So that means I did something wrong. I just got to figure out what I did wrong. Um, oh, I see what I did wrong. I see it right here. Did I actually subtract off 4 from that? Why, no I did not. So I have negative 4x plus 4 equals negative 14. I'm going to actually subtract off the 4 this time. And I get negative 4x equals negative 18. And then I'm going to divide it by 4. And I get x equals 18 fourths, which is 9 halves. OK, so now let's check 9 halves. So I found my mistake, hopefully. And let's see if it actually works. So I go back and I change that 7 into a 9. And now it works. So yay, this was frowny face bad, but now I have figured out my correct answer. Yay, which is why you check, OK? Because you can make little mistakes like that. As, as I said many times before, children, I've been doing math longer than you've been alive, and I just made a simple mistake. All right, so now I know my answer is negative 5 halves and 9 halves. So I can box it off, happy face. OK, now um, you need to be super, super, super careful because um, I'm going to show you an example. And this is an excellent example for you to try on your own by pausing and see if you can simplify this and then unpause it to see if you did it right. So I'm going to say plus 25 equals 12. So you see this thing and you want to solve it, and your instinct is to take care of this thing on the inside. Because I've been kind of beating into your head that you're supposed to simplify first. So you're going to try to simplify that first and then um, see what happens and then go from there. Now, I'm going to do this a little bit differently because I know I'm supposed to isolate the absolute value first. And so now I'm going to use that technique I just mentioned a little early and kind of glazed over, something called a U substitution. I'm going to replace this with a U, OK, in the work. So I have 3 times the absolute value of u plus 25 equals 12. And I'm just using this as a placeholder. That's what u substitution is, just placeholder. And I'm going to subtract 25 to isolate this. And I get negative 13, huh? And I'm going to divide by 3 to get the absolute value of u is negative 13 over 3. Now, I don't know about you guys, but um, that's impossible. So I know for a fact that this thing instead is no solution. I didn't bother simplifying all that stuff first. I wanted to isolate the absolute value first to see if I even needed to. And in this case, I don't.